and brought a word of direction into many people's lives. He's been a blessing in my life. And I haven't seen him for several years because he was on, on leave. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But it is an honor to have the doctor in the house. <laughs> Praise God. We are so glad to have Dr. Jeffers tonight. Can you make him welcome in Jesus' name? Come and preach the word of the Lord. We are in the book of Revelation, chapter number one, and in verse four. Revelation chapter number one, verse four, King James Version. And we are so grateful to be founded in the house of the Lord one more time. If you're grateful to be here, lift your hands and just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Hung songwriter said he didn't have to do it, but we want to honor the founder of this great conference, Bishop Lopez. Amen. Mother Lopez, we love you. Appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you, Bishop did a Houdini on us. We were pointing our hands over here, and Bishop was over there. I said, I said well, I know it can't be the rapture because I'm still here, so <laughs> you can't go nowhere without me, Bishop. And uh, we thank God for Pastor Adam Lopez and uh, his lovely wife for all of the amen. That's right. Give honor to whom honor is due. To all of you, the ministers, bishops, elders, saints of the Most High, God, we're glad you're here and to be found in the presence of the Lord. And I'm so grateful that my wife is here. Amen. With me. Would you wave your hands, honey, so they know who you are? Amen. People say, well, why did, how did, how did she get him? Well, she spoke this morning. You get the DVD, so you get the full impact, and you'll understand that one real quick. And we're just grateful that the Lord has blessed me with such a gift. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. Would you read this out loud with me, please? John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before. One more time. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you. Peace from him which is, which was, which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before. Lift your hands with me just for a moment. Father, it is finished. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, greet a few people around you. Hug someone. Tell someone, I'm so glad you're here. Smile at somebody. Come on. Let them know you're glad they're here in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you on this subject from Revelation 1 and 4, which is, which was, and which is to come. The Lord actually portrays this as one of his titles. The thing, to be honest with you, that first startles me about this in a sense is that I would think he would begin with which was, and then move to which is. But he is giving us a key to how he processes and moves. When God begins to deal with you, he always deals with which is. He deals with you in your present condition, your present hurts, your present disappointments, your present frustrations, your present anxieties. Then... He's a God that knows how to get all up in your business. He'll get all up in your Kool-Aid and discuss the flavor. 
and he goes back to which was, he will all of a sudden go back to your childhood. He will deal with your hurts and your disappointments from not having proper relationships. And he will deal with your concepts, issues with a father. And then he will jump from your past and move into your future, which is to come and give you the security that I'm already there. And because I'm already there, you're going to be just fine if you will follow me. Somebody clap your hands and tell God thank you. I had a very unique experience with the Lord before coming here, thank God for my wife. She was very strong with me, fought with me, prayed with me. But we had just gotten back from Pastor Geary. We had such a wonderful time with Pastor and Sister Geary, Mother Geary. We love them and appreciate them. And we just gotten back that Saturday night, just this Saturday night. And we were tired, of course, and shifting and moving. And all of a sudden, by that Monday, it was as if I had no strength within my physical body. I mean, I was in bed for over 12 hours. And it was like I hadn't rested at all. And I began to talk to the Lord to what was happening here. And he said, you know this is a spiritual attack. He said, but it's an attack also for where you're going. The attack did not stop here because when it came time to travel finally on the Wednesday to come here, I couldn't even lift the luggage. I, I mean, I was just, I felt like a baby. My wife was doing almost everything, you know, running, doing this, doing that, and, and taking care of most, just everything. And when I, we flew here, we were flying here on the plane, the attack intensified to where I could not breathe. And it was like I did not have control of my emotions. I was actually crying on the plane. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, again, you know it's a spiritual attack, but it's because I'm allowing you to have the compassion to feel what my people have been going through. He said, a lot of them under, in, biblically understand that they have victory, but they have not been able to apply what they understand into their everyday living. And he said, it's not sometimes because they don't want to. And it's not sometimes because they haven't tried. He said, but what's happening is in their trying, they're becoming weary. And they're beginning to lose faith. I know God wants to deliver people. And I know God can deliver people. But will he deliver me? Hebrews 11 and 6 says this in the King James Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It simply says this, that he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Because he told us before, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So you have to understand that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Touch your neighbor and say, God heard you. The Lord has allowed some very significant attacks to take place to stretch us beyond measure. Attacks that have been beyond our emotional, mental, and physical ability to handle. And he purposely did it in order to bring us into Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. The latter portion of the verse where he says, Not nor by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's so that you would live in absolute dependence upon God. To bring you to this point of dependence, he has to bring you to where your intellect cannot solve the problem. He must bring you to where your networking of friends cannot solve the problem. He must bring you to where your job cannot solve the problem. He must bring you to all the years of your salvation and even your prayer life cannot solve the problem. He will allow your prayer life as if it were to fail you. You're trying to talk to God, you're trying to talk to God, and it's like there's a wall. It's as if your prayers go up to the ceiling, come back down in your lap, and laugh at you and say, I'm not going any higher. You pray for other people and they get delivered. You pray for other people and they find their answer. You turn to pray for yourself and there's nothing. And sometimes you just have to make the cry, pass me not 
oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not. I'm not upset that you blessed others, but could you just break up a little something, something, and come over here. But as I was on that plane, my wife would lean over and pray for me. And I began to talk more intensely to God. He said, I'm getting ready to bring a shift. He said, when your feet hit the ground, this will be broken off of you. And when I hit the ground, my strength returned. And I was able to do what I'd been doing. I couldn't keep up with my wife walking. But I was able just to keep up and do everything I needed to do. And God said, in like manner, I shall show up to this conference and things that have been tormenting my people and things that have been holding them down, things they've been puzzled over, things they've not been able to fix, things they've not seemed to be able to pray through, things they don't have answers about. Touch your neighbor, say, broken. I don't have time to preach the length I would like to. And why I'm saying that is because the combination of the altar service that God is ready to do and the length of the word would be quite a while. So I'm going to cut some of the word because God is ready to start a deliverance in this house. touch the person beside you and say, if you want deliverance, then prepare to be honest. Quit this fake it till you make it. Stop living Halloween. Take your mask off, baby. We're not impressed. Take your cape off. We need to deal with Clark Kent, not Superman. And the reason why God had me to become emotionally naked first and tell you of my vulnerability and my struggle is because God's trying to tell you, if you'll be open, you will find help. But if you want to act like you're so strong and nothing bothering you, you sit there and keep looking real nice and go back with your problem. If you're too afraid of people, too afraid of what people are going to think and how they're going to address you, that you're a dignitary, you're a pastor. And that was one of the things the Lord spoke to me about the bishops and the pastors. He said, there's been such pressure on some of you that you felt like you're literally gonna lose your mind. But because of titles and status, you have been afraid to release what's really going on. I'm sorry, I'm not here to impress anybody. It's not, it's not my job. But the Lord said he's ready for deliverance in this house tonight. And God's going to start right at the core. But the Lord said, and I'm talking to people on the balcony, and we'll wait on you to make your way down. But the Lord said, there are people in this house that the pressures of life become so great until you have become suicidal. Oh, I, I, I know we're not supposed to admit that. <laughs> we're apostolics. We speak in tongues. We run the aisles. We swing our handkerchiefs. And then we go home and kick the cat, yell at the dog, scream at our wife. And bang our heads up against the wall, frustrated. Because we're saying, I'm crying unto you and I don't have a clue of what's going on. And the Lord said, if you will be real in this house, I'm calling for those that have been battling a spirit of suicide. You've been battling it for some of you for quite a few months. You've been having, and let me clarify what God means by suicide. It is not simply taking a bunch of pills and ready to die. Suicide is I quit. It's like a boat that's in the ocean and you turn your motor off to where the ocean can take you anywhere it wants to take you and eventually it's gonna smash you up against the rocks or throw you up on the shore. You've shut your motor off. You've lost your will to war. That's a spirit of suicide. Nikandala Mamashekete. 
Where are you? The Lord is calling for you. Come on. You're in the balcony. You're on the pew. God said, come and come now. We're going to waste a whole lot of time now. But you're here, so you're so afraid of folk till you won't move. And you're going to go back with this thing until we read about you in a newspaper. But the Lord said, you're here in this house. Brother Jason, praise team. Nekuma Mara Sheki Tadebe Babo Sheki Tadeba Babo Shataya. She keen that I'm a mama mo satana baba shataya. The Lord's waiting. Can I get a little deeper here? We've got pastors in this house. We've got pastors' wives in this house. I know we're not supposed to admit this. But you're dying. God, would you help us to become honest? Would you just help us? Would you just help us, please? Would you just help us, please? Help us to stop being so afraid of people. So afraid of organizations. So afraid of people's opinions. Come on, God's calling.
thank you for those of you that were honest enough to come. The Lord told me to call one last time before we start to pray. You're weary. In essence, you've lost your will, will to war. You may be the strong one in your family. Maybe everybody comes and relies on you. Some of you are afraid because your family's here and you don't want them to ask you questions afterwards. But the Lord is calling one last time because when I start praying, and I mean this, nobody move. Don't come to the altar then. So if you're coming, you're coming now because the Spirit of the Lord does not want to be interrupted by the distraction of your walking. Sing one more time. Give them a chance to come, would you please? special or tingly. Your palms don't gotta sweat. You don't gotta have some sort of miraculous, mysterious, supernatural something. All you got to do is believe because he said so.
Now we're going to get ready to shift because I got to make another, the Lord wants to make another altar call and our, our time is slipping away from us and there's a few other calls God still needs to make. But we're going to sing the song, the anthem. And before we do, I want you to lift your hands. Those of you who are at this altar, I want you to lift your hands and just simply say this, God, I thank you that it's over. And I want you to understand something. This does not mean that the devil will not try to attack you again or bring some of the same attacks on you. What it means is you must stand in faith and tell the devil, it's over. You no longer can bring that to me. I don't accept it. I don't accept it.
I make another call. Before you go back to your seat, wait and see if this is you. If this is not you, then go back to your seat. But the Lord's now calling for those of you that have been physically sick from colds to cancer, knee problems, back problems, God's calling for you. That's not you. Please go back to your seat. If that's you, if you're on the balcony, wherever you are, make your way up here quickly. For the Lord is ready to heal. Okay, you have problems with your kidneys, sugar, diabetes, glaucoma. You say, well, you didn't call what I was dealing with. Get a clue and come on. frustrated. Doctors are telling you they can't help you. God said, but I'm the ultimate physician and I can't help you. And the reason why some of you, God brought you to this point is because you got too much faith in man. So God let man fail you. If that's what's needed, that's what's needed. Come on. Let God touch you.
house. I said, are there believers in this house? I said, are there believers in this house? Then believers that are up here needing prayer for the sick, I need you to place your right hand on your chest. This symbolizes any, any area of your sickness or disease, no matter where it's attacking you, I don't care if it's your feet or whatever. It didn't say you had to touch the exact area. It just said lay hands. You're now laying hands on yourself. Now speak with authority. Say, I am the property of God. And I serve sickness and disease. It's eviction notice that by God's stripes, I am healed. Yeah! Yeah! poverty, great financial difficulty, and if you check, it's almost like it's in your lineage, a generational curse, and what happens is you get a little money, you advance a little bit, and then something comes up and eats it up, God said he's ready to break it. The reason why you, if this is you, you need to go back to your seat and get something that represents your money. Don't get afraid. We ain't lifting an offering. Relax yourself. Take a chill pill and be still. Get your credit card, your wallet. If you don't have no money, ask your neighbor to borrow a dollar. Now give it back because God ain't going to bless no thief. Talk about this a blessing from the Lord. The devil is a liar. Make sure you give it back. But if you don't have no money, tell your neighbor, let me borrow a dollar, please. And I'll give it back to you right afterwards. And then make your way back up to this altar. The Lord's given me to break this spirit of poverty. If that's you. And I'm telling you right now, I'm talking to certain bishops. I'm talking to certain elders and pastors. who have been trying to break forth in the area of your finances with the church and various things. And you've not been able to do it. God said, come on. If you got only checks, bring it. But you, whatever represents your money, bring it on. Come on, make your way straight up to the closest you can come. Come on, as close as you can come because there's people coming behind you. Close as you can come.
testimonies to the healing miraculous power of God. There's going to be testimonies to what God has done in this service for his glory, for his honor, for his praise. Come on, if you're up in the balcony, we're giving you time. Make your way down here. off of you. I break every hindrance. I break this walls that have been surrounding your finances. I break it by the authority of the Holy Ghost. I break it. It is time for increase. It is time for flow. It is time for God to meet you. It is time for God to fund the vision. And now you, the people of God, get, get your money in your right hand. Get your money in your right hand. Whatever represents your money. Get it in your right hand. Lift it up to God. Right hand symbolizes power and authority. I break every generational curse against you. I break every spirit of poverty against you. There shall come a flow of God. There shall come a flow of God. There shall come a flow of God.
we pray for the spirit of wisdom that wisdom may be granted to your children that when you bless them with the surplus they will by your spirit know how to manage your blessing correctly they will not operate their blessing through their carnality or through their logic but they will operate it by the leading of the spirit and by the word of the Lord in Jesus name some other things the Lord like to do but my time is far spent so would you just lift your hands and would you just give God thanks and praise for his goodness let's lift up our hands and give him praise come on it's victory night it's victory night hallelujah hallelujah Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We begin at 10 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. God bless you. God bless you. 10 o'clock sharp, we start. Have a good night rest.